Hello, and welcome to another episode of Law and Sarasota. I'm your host, Adam Tabruge. In October of 2013, there was a very special event here in Sarasota. Members of the Sarasota County Bar Association joined with faculty and students from the Booker Law Academy to welcome the president of the Florida Bar, Eugene Pettis, to the campus of Booker High School. We had an opportunity to speak with President Pettis, to hear his remarks, and to talk with other members of the legal community about the importance of this program to Sarasota. Mr. Pettis, welcome back to Sarasota and welcome to Booker High School. What brings you here today? Well, I have the privilege of visiting Booker High School's uh, Law Academy. Uh, I missed the opening ceremony back in August due to schedule, but I'm most excited to uh, see the academy and meet some of the students and look at the energy level that's palpable here on campus for this particular program. This is a very exciting program. We're really happy to have it resurrected here in Sarasota. And one of the issues that we're talking about here today is diversity in the legal profession. Um, could you help explain to our audience why is it that diversity is important? I think diversity is important for a multitude of reasons. First of all, I think we as a society are stronger when everybody's at the table being represented. We each bring different life's experiences, uh, which when you bring that together, you have a better product. Uh, we're a better community when we have everyone represented. Secondly, society is diversifying. We're becoming a more brown country uh, in every demographic indicator. And I think it's very important that we continue pipeline initiatives within the law, such as this particular law academy, so that we will have lawyers not that we need an African-American lawyer to represent an African-American community, but we need to have people within the profession that represents each and every community. So these pipeline programs tie into the issue of diversity, which is critical for us to be the best we can be in society. You mentioned some other initiatives that are in place. Could you tell us about some of those? Certainly, uh, with, within my initiatives uh, as president of the Florida Bar, we have something called Vision 2016. It's looking at the future of law, the ever-changing future of law, and it's gonna be a study over the, first, the next three years. Uh, one of the subgroups in that area is looking at legal education. Within legal education, we're looking at pipeline initiatives. We're looking at uh, how we're bringing people to the profession. I think it's very important that we open up the doors of legal education, take the lawyers into the communities to touch bases with students at a younger age, show them what lawyers do, uh, what's involved in being a lawyer, and the sooner they can get that insight in those lessons, I think more focused they'll be when they step onto their college campus. Uh, so we're looking at how we can create better relationships, better pipelines, hopefully to have a positive impact on who's coming to the, the field of law, and hopefully we'll have people that are not coming to law because they didn't know what else they wanted to do, but you'll have people coming to the law that are really dedicated in their heart to serve as lawyers in their communities. Mr. Pettis, you're making history yourself as the first African-American president of the Florida Bar. Could you tell us a little bit about some of the early influences upon you and what led you into the law? Certainly, it's a uh, long story, and, and, and I'll make it a little short. I, I, in a way, I think I was put on this earth to do what I'm doing. Uh, my mom told me as early as I can recall, you need to be a lawyer, you talk so much. Uh, I wanted to prove mom wrong, as we often do as kids, and I looked at being a police officer. Uh, I then, my brother was coming out of dental school, I said, I want to be a dentist. And then one day on campus, I said, you know what, I don't like the sciences, I'm not happy, let me go to law school. Uh, it was where I was supposed to be. Finally, I found my water, uh, and that's where I was supposed to be. So, um, I have been influenced by a lot of people, uh, lawyers and servants of the community, many of which I never knew, but I read about them, I learned about them. And the one thing that drew me to the law is that I think it's very important that we don't look to the law just that it's gonna take me to riches, uh, which sometimes that's the TV persona that we see, but it's an incredible profession to serve the community. And that's where it was built, that's where the core values rest, and that's what drew me to the law. I've always been one that's community oriented, and I have had that fulfillment through the law, as well as having a great career to provide for my family and all of their needs. 
I couldn't agree with you more, and I really appreciate your emphasis on community service, and we really appreciate your visit to Booker High School here in Sarasota today. It's a pleasure being here and continue to do the good works on your program that you've been doing for a long time. Erica Quartermain has worked as an assistant state attorney in Sarasota County for many years. She's also a member of the Diversity Committee of the Sarasota County Bar Association. Erica was able to stop by and talk about the efforts of the Diversity Committee with me. Erica, you're a member of the Sarasota County Bar Association's Diversity Committee. Could you tell us a little bit about that committee? Sure, it comprises probably about 12 people who are members of the Sarasota Bar, judges, practicing attorneys in town, and we focus on bringing more diversity to our area and specifically within the bar. Um, the way, the things we've focused on in the past are the diversity scholarship, um, promoting events where we can attract lawyers from different backgrounds, so that's what the Diversity Committee does. Why is that important and why has that been a focus of the Bar Association? Well, I think, and I think that many people in the bar agree, that diversity is our single biggest problem in this community. And it has been a challenge attracting people from different backgrounds here. Um, the scholarship has been helpful in that we bring um, diverse students to Sarasota for a summer, but the problem is they aren't staying. So um, it's been a challenge, it continues to be a challenge, and you know, we're committed to working on it. We're here today at Booker High School for uh, a program about the Booker High School Law Academy and to hear from the president of the Florida Bar, Eugene Pettis. Um, it's a pretty exciting day. It's a very exciting day, and I think it's um, a huge compliment to have Eugene Pettis come here, but it's well deserved. I think that this is going to be an amazing program and opportunity for students in this school. And while the program is hosted here at Booker High School, my understanding is, is that students from all over Sarasota County will have opportunities to participate in the Law Academy. That's my understanding too. I'm not sure practically how that will pan out. Well, um, I know that President Pettis will be touring the uh, new courtroom that was built here at Booker High School and uh, that we've got over 100 members of the Bar Association who will be here for his visit today. Yeah, it's a big deal. It's a really big deal and um, I think this is going to be one of the first opportunities that we're going to be able to keep these students who are homegrown who come from different backgrounds, expose them to law early, and bring them up to um, contributing um, members of the legal community. And I'm really excited about it. Well, thank you for being here, and thanks for your work on the Diversity Committee. Joining President Pettis on his tour of the Booker High School campus was Arnell Bryant-Willis, who is the Diversity Initiative Manager for the Florida Bar. Welcome to Booker High School. Um, could you tell me what your job is with the Florida Bar? Well, my official job title is Diversity Initiatives Manager for the Florida Bar. And what does that mean? That means that the Florida Bar is committed to inclusion. We don't necessarily talk just about diversity at the bar because we want everyone to feel totally included. I'm the first diversity initiatives manager or person who's been hired for the bar specifically to handle that particular role or this role. And it's uh, a challenging, exciting, difficult, and wonderful opportunity for me. What are some of the visits and projects that you've been experiencing since you took the job? Well, I must talk about the Sarasota projects. The Sarasota projects are above all of the projects that we funded. We have a program that we uh, call the Leadership Grants, and Sarasota has received two Leadership Grants thus far, and they have both been outstanding. They've uh, only received $1,500 per grant. Uh, 
and so we don't fund the project completely. We just give a portion of funding for the projects. But the projects here have been above, above the cuff. Why do you say that? What, what really impressed you with what you saw? They're totally involved. It's not uh, programs that have meals necessarily. Oftentimes, diversity programs have a keynote speaker and a luncheon. In Sarasota, Sarasota involves the total community. They look at a particular area, they focus on a particular area of the law, and then they bring the total community in, and it's, it's just total participation from all sectors. Well, thank you so much for the Florida Bar's support of what we're doing here in Sarasota, and thank you for being here at Booker High School today. Thank you. Students from the Law Academy had the opportunity to hear remarks from President Pettis. As you will see, he stressed the importance of community service over financial gain for these budding attorneys. Um, as a member of the local bar who happens to have the privilege of working in the high school setting, it's my pleasure to see this culmination come together. For many of us that attended law school back in the day, this was the one thing that was missing, was actual trial in courtroom experience, and to have a group of mentors that were actually doing what we wanted to do to help navigate us along the way. Mentors was important and practical experience was important. And to have that here in a four-year curriculum program in the best high school in the county, I will say. Yeah. We are honored to have that program in the future. And it's without further ado that I welcome to the stage at this time, Mr. Eugene Pettis. And as he comes, Dr. Shelley has said that it's homecoming week here at Booker. You are now a member of the Booker family. So Thank you, Shelly. Thank you so much, Shelly. You know, it didn't take long to come on a campus and feel the spirit of a campus. I met Dr. Shelly one minute after coming on campus, and she just exudes uh, excitement, which is why the students are excited about their education process. And to see the community uh, surrounding this program is even more reason why there is no doubt uh, this is going to be an incredible, an incredible experience. So this is a great opportunity, but you need to recognize the opportunity and to make sure that you're studying, you're, you're, you're picking the brains and the minds of the people that are coming before you, asking questions, being inquisitive about uh, uh, what you're looking at. But know that if you commit yourself to whatever that dream is, and we all have dreams. How many people have dreams out there of what you want to do? We all have dreams. And you know what the difference? One of the things that I was always, always able to do is I always have a five-year plan. I'm always looking to be where am I going. I don't forget today, I don't lose enjoying the current moment, but it's very important strategically that you don't just wander through life. You know where you're going, you study what it's going to take to get there, and you'd be willing to commit to it. Because there's nothing worthwhile that comes to you easy. So if you are one, and that's one of the things that I always, I think is one of the greatest attributes that I have. I'm willing to work hard. I'm not the quickest guy, I'm not the fastest reader, but I'm gonna work, I'm gonna work, and I'm gonna work. And it's always served me well towards success. You have other people that have all the skills in the world, but are not willing to work. They wanna take the shortcut. Don't be one of those people. Don't be one of those people. Whatever that dream is, post it on your wall. Think about it. Think about study. Now we have the internet. You don't even have to go to the library. Study what it's going to take. Find some people within your communities that are doing what you are interested in and, and, and reach out to them. This is a great community of mentorship, a great community uh, uh, over here in Sarasota. So reach out to them and study what it is you're interested in and find out what it's going to take to accomplish it be yours. But understand that success doesn't mean you're gonna, you're gonna hit the home run the first time. You know, some people swing at it and if I strike out, well, I guess it wasn't meant to be. You got to get up, dust yourself off and do it again and again until you are successful with your goal. And never, ever, ever sell yourself short. 
What do I mean by that? We're in a generation where everybody wants society times, where everybody wants something quick. If it's not quick, if I can't get it now, I don't want to work on it. Understand that things worthwhile takes a commitment. And you must be willing to stay focused for the long haul. I have had a great career, a career beyond anything that I could have imagined. But one of the things that's important is that I want you, each of you, to commit now that not only are you going to focus on your dreams, but you're going to see how you can lift some other people up along the way, your community up, make a difference in your community. Stay committed, stay focused. And if I did it, I assure you, you can succeed. Thank you so much for the time, and I wish you well in the game this week. Thank you. Thank you. My friend Shelley Freeland Eddy, a former prosecutor, is the person who was able to coordinate the visit of President Pettus to the Booker High School campus. Shelley joined us in the studio to discuss the Booker High School Law Academy. I'm here in the studio with Shelley Freeland Eddy, Director of Program Development at Booker High School. Welcome to the show. Thank you for having me, Adam. Shelley, I wanted to get you on so that our viewers could learn a little bit about what's going on over at Booker High School. Mm -hmm. uh, first things first, there is a beautiful new campus over there. Yes, um, Booker is completing the renovation of a $60 million plus dollar renovation for the entire campus of Booker High School. Um, it is slated for completion in late December, early January of 2014. And part of that um, renovation um, includes a marvelous new law academy and an actual mock trial courtroom that's on Booker's campus. How did the law academy and the mock trial courtroom come to be? Well, the Law Academy is not new. The Law Academy has been in place for several years, as you know, being a Booker alum. Um, it started out as more of a mentoring after-school type program, and it's now um, evolved into an actual four-year course curriculum through the school's career and technical education program. And so now there is an actual academy. There are two sections of classes. There is a criminal justice section and a legal studies section, which includes your civil law, your constitutional law, and your international law. And there's actually tracks of study for four years where there will be a class of graduates that will come through starting in 2013 that will go through the program. And they actually will receive industry certifications through the CTE or Career and Technical Education program in either Microsoft Word or PowerPoint or computer programs that enable them to do better as they go into college and hopefully into the legal profession. How do we match students from Sarasota County with this program? Well, um, because Booker High School is a magnet school, anyone, any student from any part of Sarasota County can choose to come to Booker High School and be a part of the Law Academy. There is an application process just as there is for the VPA program. But other than completing the application process and determining which track you want to go through, any freshman can be a part of the Law Academy at Booker High School. Now, as we talked about, there has been a law academy in the past, but there's been this recent resurrection. Uh, is this the first year of the new law academy? This is the first year of the new law academy, and the, the new part is the addition of the course curriculum requirement. Before, with the old law academy, there were not courses that students actually took during their school day that gave them um, actual practice or clinical skills, so to speak, in the areas of legal um, services, legal practice, and law enforcement. But now what happens is it's almost like they've declared a major for law studies at Booker High School. In the first year, they do general elective studies classes that generally discusses the Constitution, the foundations of government, how laws become laws, and those types of general things. In the second year, they elect either the criminal justice track, which focuses on criminal law, or they focus on the legal services or legal studies track, which is your civil litigation and your civil law. And they actually go through courses of study that explore those areas. In their third and fourth years, they had the option of actually even um, participating in an internship with local firms here in Sarasota County. We've gotten a partnership with Gulf Coast Legal Services that has agreed to make a position available. Law firms have agreed to make positions available and even the courthouse. So we're very excited about those opportunities for our students. It is terrific. And I've got to say the uh, new campus over at Booker is just beautiful. Isn't it awesome? 
I've been to a, a lot of high school campuses throughout the state of Florida, and this may be one of the nicest ones that I've seen. Well, of course, I'm biased. I believe that it is. But one of the things that was really at the forefront of the architects um, and the construction crew with regard to this project was not having it feel like a closed-in type feel. It truly feels and looks like a college campus, and there's opportunities for outdoor space, places for study. If you tour any of the buildings, there are a lot of options where you can walk, walk past classrooms and actually see instruction going on without disturbing the classroom, especially in our engineering and our science labs. And in VPA, you can walk past and see music in action. So it's just an awesome opportunity that displays education from the inside out and kind of makes the facility a, a, a feature space. And so we're just really um, honored to have that here in Sarasota County. You mentioned uh, that there's a new courtroom on campus. Yes. Uh, could you tell our viewers how that courtroom came to be? Sure. Um, after the um, partnership with um, Booker High School and the Community Foundation and West Coast Black Theater Troop and some other nonprofits here in the community for the production of We Are Sarasota, for which Booker's VPA program played an intricate role, there was a lot of discussion about um, bringing back the Law Academy. There had been discussion by myself and some other mentors in the community, Attorney Keith DeBose, Judge Charles Williams, some other alumni that had talked about how can we get this program back in place that we're moving into a new fabulous campus. And so what happened is, is that we brought together a lot of stakeholders, one being the Sarasota County Bar Association's Diversity Committee, two, their partnership helped us develop a relationship with the Florida Bar, we even have a relationship with the Retired Attorneys Association of Sarasota County. Didn't know that we had one, but we do. And they are a group of about 20 to 30 active retired attorneys that have just committed to giving service to our students. And so we're just so pleased to have that partnership. We also have a partnership with the Teen Court Program here in Sarasota County. And one of the goals here as the program gets up and running is for us to be able to have Booker as a satellite campus for Teen Court programs. And that will really be an instrumental benefit for students seeing court in action, but also being in a, a less intimidating um, environment, if you will. So those were partnerships that came about. And basically what we did was we worked with our contractor, um, Willis Smith, with the architect, Harvard Jolly, and basically put together what a mock courtroom would look like and how much that cost. The construction amounted to a little over $30,000, and we raised the dollars. It was all community effort. The city of Sarasota, the Sarasota County Diversity um, Association, the Florida Bar, individual attorneys, individual law firms, all pulled together and made donations to make this construction possible. One of the things that's interesting is that a lot of people assume that the Law Academy courtroom was built in as a part of the rebuild process, and it was not. It was something that came about after the fact when the um, community pulled together after We Are Sarasota and talked about how could we really make this program stand out across the county and across the state, and the clinical piece was what stood out. And so we talked about it, what it would take. Basically, it's just a classroom that's been converted into a courtroom, but you've been there and going in there, and I'm sure you've got some footage, it does not look like a classroom, it looks like an actual courtroom. And when you're training students in the law, I really think it's valuable to have that courtroom environment. It just puts you in the right mood Absolutely. to practice yeah, law. Right. And I think it's going to be helpful as we try to develop the skills of these students going forward. Absolutely. As you and I know, when we were preparing cases and getting ready for trial, we do a dry run. We go into the courtroom. We have our clients sit in their respective places. We explain to them what the makeup of the courtroom is going to be, where the jury is going to be sitting, where the attorney is going to be sitting that it's open for the public who can be in the gallery where you'll stand up and raise your hand to swear and tell the truth. Um, even we test our uh, technology. We make sure the laptop is connected. We make sure that the projection screen is working. We stand in front of the podium. We test our inflection and our tone and our voice to make sure that we're given the best presentation because as you know, you just get one shot at it. You don't get a do-over in the courtroom. So. Shelley, you mentioned the uh, Diversity Committee of the Sarasota County Bar Association, and diversity's been a major initiative of the Florida Bar yes. as well. Yes. Um, when we use that word, what are we talking about and, and what's important? 
Well, I think diversity um, means a lot of things um, because our community is constantly changing. Um, diversity from an ethnic background is one of the keys that's still an area that needs to be developed within the legal profession. Um, in terms of African American and other minority stu students who become lawyers, that percentage across the grand scheme of practicing attorneys in the state of Florida is still relatively low. And one of the things that we have tried to do is to create a professional working environment that one, makes Sarasota attractive to a diverse population. One of the barriers that we face is the median age of people that live in Sarasota. So the perception is that Sarasota is an old town, an old place to live. And we lose a lot of young people who may not be married and have families and have connections to Sarasota because they feel like they're not gonna be able to develop those relationships. So that's the first barrier is age that we have to overcome, that this is a young, thriving community of professionals and that there is room in the arts, there's room in our social interactions, and there's room professionally for people that look like both me and you to live and work here in Sarasota County. So uh, the, the age barrier is an issue that we've been overcoming, um, ethnic diversity, gender diversity, and even diversity with, with um, attorneys who may have mobility issues and being able to practice and to get around in Sarasota County. So those are some of the things that um, has been a part of the initiative from the Florida Bar Down, and that was one of the things that Mr. Pettis talked about when he came to Booker High School. Yes, both Sarasota County Bar Association and Booker High have come to the attention uh, statewide yes. of the Florida Bar Association yes. for our efforts to improve diversity in the legal profession. Uh, tell us a little bit about how you were able to get Mr. Pettis to come to campus. Well, um, one of the things that we thought about was that when Mr. Pettis was sworn in as the um, first African American to be elected as the president of the Florida Bar last year, we knew that we were in the pipeline for having the new booker. It wasn't until later that we determined that that new booker would also include an actual courtroom on campus. Once we determined that we were one of the very few high schools across the state that had a um, courtroom on its campus, we thought that being a first, it would be important to reach out to another first to have him come. And so we invited him to come to participate in our grand opening. And because of his schedule, he wasn't able to come back in August, but we, he'd work with our campus and work with me personally to to be able to come and tour the facility um, back at the end of October. And so when he came, he was impressed not only with the caliber of students that are members of the program, but for the collaboration of the community and all the different stakeholders that were present law enforcement, elected officials, school board officials, practicing attorneys, corporate America. We had the whole mix in terms of commitment, and that was something that he stressed that would be important for moving our lawyers to the next level. So one of the things that he said, which we were so pleased about, is that he wants to include our model in the pipeline initiative that he's working in his Vision 2016, which includes creating a diverse legal population and also educating students at an early age Age about the practice of law and we're doing that at Booker High School. Well Shelly thank you very much for your work over at Booker High School and, and thanks for bringing President Pettis to campus. I think it was inspiring not only for the students but also for members of our local legal community Absolutely. to be able to hear his words that day. Absolutely and it was so encouraging to hear him because he talked about the struggles that he'd had personally before achieving the practice of law and his continuing um, diligent work ethic along with his personal commitment to give back and all of us have as attorneys came to the pre profession with a desire to give back in one way or another despite what our particular priorities may be for charity or for giving but he stressed that we should never lose that as practicing attorneys and that we should always keep that at the forefront as we're entering into the practice of law it shouldn't be about first making the big dollars and then giving your leftovers to the community. Being a priority and a servant to your community should always be at the forefront as you enter into the practice. And so that was good for all of us to be reminded of. A very important message indeed. And a great day at Booker High School. Yes. Thanks for being on the program, Shelley. Thank you.